I'm here today to reflect on the tragedy that occurred in Colorado Springs last week. There, a gunman attacked a Planned Parenthood clinic, killing three people and injuring nine others. Colorado is mourning the losses of the three who were murdered, all of whom were parents in the prime of their lives, all of whom represented the best of our state. Officer Garrett Swayze was one of the first officers to arrive at the scene. He had served as an officer at the University of Colorado, Colorado Springs Police Department for six years. Garrett had been married to his wife, Rachel, for 17 years. He leaves behind his two children, Faith, who's only six, and Elijah, who just turned 11 on Sunday. His wife said that his greatest joys were his family, his church, and his profession. We will cherish his memory, especially those times he spent tossing the football to his son and snuggling with his daughter on the couch. She went on to note that helping others brought him deep satisfaction. Being a police officer was a part of him. In the end, she said, his last act was for the safety and well-being of others and was a tribute to his life. And Officer Swayze's actions last Friday spoke to his extraordinary courage and selflessness. As a university police officer, he wasn't under any obligation to respond when he first heard of the incident through the emergency radio. He could have looked the other way. Yet he was one of the first to arrive at Planned Parenthood, which is four miles away from the university. His good friend and co-pastor said that Officer Swayze often responded to dangerous calls off campus and that he put other people's lives before his own. The University of Colorado, Colorado Springs police chief said that there was no way any of us could have kept him here. He was always willing to go. He had an enthusiasm that was hard to quell. Officer Swayze is truly a hero in every sense of the word. Before joining the university police force, Officer Swayze was a junior national champion ice skater. Upon hearing the news of the tragedy, his skating partner with whom he won that championship observed that Garrett was selfless, always there to help me, always my wingman. He was my brother and my partner. I could always count on him. After his competitive career, Officer Swayze continued to teach skating. He also served as a co-pastor at Hope Chapel, which he and his family attended since 2001. At church, he led he led care groups and taught scripture and guitar. At services on Sunday, a fellow pastor at the church described how he felt. You don't realize how much you love someone until you can't tell him anymore. Mr. President, our state is also mourning the loss of Kier Marcel Stewart. He was only 29 years old. Here's how his family and friends have described Kier, a good friend, an amazing listener, one of the most caring men I've ever met, someone you could just sit and talk to about life, caring, giving, funny, and just a damn good person. Those traits were on display Friday as he was at Planned Parenthood accompanying a friend. He served our country in the Army and had been deployed to Iraq between 2005 and 2006. Last week, he died as he was trying to save others. According to reports, after, after being shot outside of the building, Kier ran back inside to warn others to seek safety. His family credits his military training and instinct for how he responded. Kier wasn't a native of Colorado. He was born in Texas, where he was a three-sport athlete playing football and basketball and running track. His friends say he moved to Colorado because he was stationed at Fort Carson and stayed, like so many of us, because he loved our beautiful state. Kier had two children, both daughters. They are 11 and 6 years old. His friend observed that he loved his daughters to death. He would do anything for them. Finally, Mr. President.
Third victim, Jennifer Markovsky, was also accompanying a friend to the clinic on Friday. Jennifer grew up in Hawaii where she met her husband, who was serving in the Army at the time. About a decade ago, in a story very similar to Kier's, they moved to Colorado when he was reassigned. Jennifer's family described her as a loving wife and mother to a young son and daughter. Her sister-in-law told the Colorado Springs Gazette she lived for her kids. She said Jennifer often took her children, who were 10 and 6, on hikes and spent time with them, baking and working on crafts. Her father, who had just wished her a happy Thanksgiving one day earlier, called her the most lovable person, kind-hearted, always there when I needed her. Yesterday, her husband said that she was a very caring and compassionate person, and patient and understanding parent. She was deeply loved by all who knew her. She was always helping the kids do homework and reading books with them. We will miss her, her cooking, crafting, and adventurous spirit. Three young parents, Mr. President, who woke up last Friday morning with long, bright futures ahead of them with the chance to raise their children and watch them grow and learn, with the chance to contribute as they had before to our community and to our country, but instead whose lives were violently ended in a hail of gunfire. Three strangers to each other now joined together in our fondest memories. Nine others were wounded and our thoughts and prayers are with them and their families as well. We should also honor and thank the Colorado Springs Police Department and other local law enforcement agencies who responded so swiftly and effectively. Five officers were wounded in the attack. I'd also like to recognize the employees at Planned Parenthood who worked tirelessly during the extended shooting and hostage incident to ensure that their patients were kept safe. This is not the day to talk about how our country begins to emerge from this season of killing and violence. But let me simply say, in recent years, too many of our children and parents have had their lives stolen. And too many of the rest of us have lived to pursue the ordinary course of our lives, going to school, going to work, seeking health care, in the shadow of the question, whose child will be next, whose mom and dad will be next. What we need today, instead of charged rhetoric and political tactics, is to find a way to at least begin figuring out how can we deal with these problems that we need to solve? How can we make things better? I would like to thank my colleagues for their comforting words this week, and I hope that all of us will take time today and in the days ahead to think of the victims and the families involved in this tragedy. tragedy. Take a moment in particular to think of the kids who lost their mom or dad. I have no doubt the Colorado Springs community and our state will come together to heal during this difficult time. We could all take a cue from that here, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. I yield the floor.